for? You guys, you guys know this guy? Yeah. So, I got a quick question, but I'm not going to ask them all. We're going to let these guys ask the questions. Okay. What you got? 1978. And I'm not going to go where you think I'm going. Okay. Because you were in one of my favorite films and I didn't know it. What's that? The Wanderers. Yes. How? How how'd that come about? I I just began acting uh, off Broadway. I, I I'm not sure if I I think this is this is before um, the the Bingo Long Traveling All Stars and Motor Kings, before the Kojak. I at that at that time you could walk down 57th Street in New York and just go up to agents' offices and say, hi, my name is such and such, here's my picture, my 8x10, my resume, if you have anything, call me. You could do that at, at that point. And I think I stopped by, uh, uh, there was a woman by the name of Fern Champion. Anybody know who that is, Fern Champion? She does a lot of casting still, and she was casting in those days, and, and um, uh, she wasn't a major casting person, but she was kind of in that mid-range, and uh, she took a kind of a liking to me because I kept, hello, <laughs> you know, I was kind of insistent. Plus, I had a friend, but you know, you know, does anyone know who Steve James was? Steve, James, you know, who Steve James was. Okay, can you tell us who he was? Can you tell us. He's an actor, he did a lot of Chuck Norris stuff, karate stuff, he was in uh, I'm Gonna Get You Sucker, played karate guy, right, and that, okay, yeah. That was Steve James. Steve James worked for I, I, um, ICM, International Creative Manager. Right, ICM on 57th Street. He worked in the mail room. So I would go to 57th Street, and 57th Street at that time, if you went down at lunchtime, I mean, everybody came out to go to lunch, and it was kind of a, um, a feast for a young man, okay? I'll leave it there. And so, so I would go down to see Steve and uh, visit all the agents' offices that I could, and Fern Champion was one of them. And then Fern called me one day. She said, I have something right away. You want to run over? Uh, I think it was that day or that next day, and uh, they need someone, you know? And you might say that I went over to Long Island. I think we were shooting in Long Island at that point. And they said, "Yeah, you're you're fit." And uh, I be, that's how I, I got the job. Happened. That's how it happened. Yeah. Have you guys seen The Wanderers before? No. Every, Dude, few have. Everybody was in. Yeah. Everybody. Yes. Absolutely. That, there's um one of the guys. Remember the Baldies? Yeah. Remember who who who'd seen it? Who who said they seen it? The, the guy in the back. The back in the back, Baldy. Do you remember the Baldies? The guy, that, that gang, the Baldies? From the Warriors, yeah. From, from the right, Wanderers. From Wander, from Wander. yeah, yeah. There was, a, there was a, one black guy in it with big bald head. Pointy head. His name was uh, Sam Art Williams. Sam Art Williams. Look him up. He became one of the most prolific producers of situation comedy and, and network television uh, that we've ever had. And he was the bald <laughs> in the yeah. water. So, and we had everybody else. There was yeah. so many, oh, so many people in that. Oh, um, yeah. the, the, meat, uh, the, meat from Porky's. Meat from Porky's. Oh, yeah, I just yeah. saw him. Yeah, I saw him not too long ago. Yeah, yeah. I heard he was just, he was recently doing some stuff. Yeah. Um, the Eric, the big uh, opera singer who was in Stir Crazy. Right, uh, He right. was uh, the lit up guy in The Running Man, the, 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 the big fat. Right, right. Yeah, he was the main baldy. He was the, uh, yeah. the, the, the leader of the gang. Yeah. Uh, the little short girl, I can never remember her name, that was his girlfriend. But she's been in a million, million things. There were... Uh, Karen yeah. Allen, of course. Karen Allen was in Karen it. Karen Allen's in it. Karen Allen was in it. Yeah. Who was? Uh, uh, who was the, there's the, there's, lead, who was the lead guy? I don't remember his oh, name. Oh, God. Italian guy. Oh, I don't God, remember his God, name. God, what was his name? He, he had um, he had a, another, another uh, as an investigator, a series at one point yeah. that ran for many years. Um, there, were, there were a ton of guys and a ton, ton of talent in, the, in that show yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That, later, that went on later to do, do I, some Honestly, I suggest you guys stuff. watch it. It's a, really, uh, it's a really fun take on 50s gangs. <laughs> Uh, you know, nothing like the Warriors. Uh, it's, 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 it's the other side. It's, uh, it's a fun take on 50s gangs. 
But we'll also talk about another film that came out in 1978. Uh -huh. uh, what the, I don't know, 1978, let's see. Let's see. Oh, maybe Dawn of the Dead. I don't know. Oh. Hi. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Uh, last year, I don't, I don't know how many people came to Connecticut Horror Fest Woo! last year. Um, I had the amazing, amazing honor to interview George Romero uh, last year at yeah. Connecticut Horror Fest. Yeah. Um, and God rest his soul. Uh, you know, obviously one of the hugest contributors to uh, what we love, the horror genre. Uh, how did you meet George, and, and, and what you know? What are your thoughts of, of, of George? Oh God! Um, God, this is a this is a very difficult because I I, I knew Dwayne Jones. Yeah. Okay, so I knew about not even living. Uh, yes. Give it up for Dwayne Jones, absolutely. Absolutely. Night of the Living Dead. And um, I was doing off Broadway, and uh, one of the actors told me they were auditioning for a part in Midtown Manhattan that I might be right for. And he said, you want, you want the information? I said, why not? I'll go up. You know, I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> in an off-Broadway theater, you know, in the back, getting, you know, it you know, wasn't the most Go, you know, pleasant place to be. It, it was nice, I mean, creatively, but, you know, I'm still in off Broadway in New York, you know? sure. <laughs> sure. So, uh, I uh, got the address, went up, uh, walked into the office, and I saw a poster, and I said, oh, Eraserhead, I like that movie. And I passed another poster, and I said, hey, not of the living dead, I know this movie, okay. And walked in, met Richard Rubenstein uh, and George, and we talked. And I auditioned uh, with Scott, Galen, and David, and then they had to come back a week later and audition with three others. And uh, so that was my first meeting, meeting with George and Richard, and that's how I met George. Yeah. 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 And then from there, uh, everything else is history. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, what did George? What did George mean to you? Oh, you, you know, you work for a director, and you know, it, it, there's an old saying in Hollywood: "Best friends until the last frame." <laughs> you, okay. you, you know, and so you you kind of move on. You yeah. know, you move on to the next project. You move on. You hope to work again with them. But yeah. you know, you, you're, you're looking for what you're going to do next. What's interesting? What's going to be fun? And um, but because of the popularity, because of the distribution yeah. of Dawn of the Dead, uh, and that that was so prolific. I had no idea that that it would be. Uh, in every drive-in, every uh, midnight showing, uh, art house, major theaters in Manhattan across, and across the United States and worldwide with Dario Argento yep. producing from that side. And I had no idea that it would be as popular as it yep. became. I uh, left New York and following the film, Scott had uh, uh, left uh, about a, uh, six months before me. You know, I left New York. I stopped in Indiana, my, where I'm from. And, uh, you know, as soon as I got there, I'm on PBS, I'm on every NBC, CBS, ABC station in, 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 in the Midwest or in, in Indianapolis. Uh, my family has me going to the drive in every night with a different group of family members <laughs> piled into cars. As soon as we go to, the, to pay the guy to get in, they say, see, he's, a, he's in the movie, he's a car. <laughs> <laughs> and this went on for, for two weeks. You know, so I, I, I wasn't sure, you know, how this, and so, to make a long story short, George and I were connected yeah. as, you know, I wouldn't, I'm not as connected with Jeff Bird from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. I'm not as connected with any of the other directors that I have because Dawn of the Dead has become one of the top uh, horror films ever made. Are we going to... No, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, That's all right, man. We're, we're, we're working here. We're working here. <laughs>
<laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> so, so. I think, yeah, I think he was gonna say something. Then he saw who it was. He was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you get it over there. Well, <laughs> so, so, um, yeah. It, it, so, so it's it became one of the top horror films ever made and ranked in some magazines, some territories, some countries, higher than the films that you would never think that it would uh, be rated above. You know, and I, I've read where it's even Star Trek and Clockwork Orange and you know, many, many classics, many great films, which I, I wouldn't rate it, but they do, they, and they have. It's, it, it, it's changed people's lives. Um, it's um, it's influenced, a hell it's of a influenced lot of a lot of directors, producers, uh, filmmakers, production companies. You know, people have um, were truly affected either one way or another by this film. In 1978, when it came out, we got reviews from the top reviewers in the country, and I'm talking about Rex Reed. I don't know, he's probably, nobody remembers Rex, I don't know if you remember, Rex Reed, okay, Rex Reed, uh, Rona Barrett, I don't know if you remember Rona Barrett, top on television about that, Cisco and Ebert, uh, and I think, if I could think of the others, but the, all of them, great reviews for this film, said so we don't, you know, it's not our kind of film, but if you like this film, it's wonderful, thumbs up, all that kind of thing, and so all of America, you know, all of America, this film was shown. I had, I had, you remember, anybody remember who Bob Fosse is? Bob Fosse, the choreographer, all that jazz, you know, the guy? He, he almost attacked me in the Los Angeles airport. <laughs> Ken Forey, oh my God, you're, no, you're the best fan, I'm your biggest fan, your girlfriend and I, we, we, we saw you in the Westchester County uh, of driving, I love you, I love you, the best fan. <laughs> so what does it mean to me, my relationship with George? Oh, um, you know, I'd have to say that's, that's the primary, if, if I could make one statement about it, it was that we're forever yoked with the skill, you know, and with its effect, its, its, its impression, um, the, uh, the result of uh, all of you being here, and certainly the result of um, all the fans all over the world just being an enamored with it. Yeah. Enamored with it. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. That's a, that's a good way to put it. It's a love. It really yeah. is um, for the people who, who love that film. Yeah. Oh. It, it, it's a deep. It's a deep love. It's my. It's it's one of my favorite films of all time. And it's a lot of people's. It's just uh, you know it brings back. I think it brings people to a certain place. You kind of remember where you were the first time. I saw it in the drive-in. I was six years old. That's bad parenting. That's, that's, bad, that's, that's bad parenting, but nobody ever accused my parents of being good parents. So um. You're not. Your parents aren't the only ones. Like, you don't know how many people come up to me and say, yeah. I introduced my son or oh, my yeah. grandson to it. I said, how's your grandson? Five. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's maybe a little too yeah. No, 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 no. I'm this, I, this is not my grandson. I'm with my son at four. I said, oh. No, no, no. You saw my daughter here? Yeah, yeah. Six years old. Yeah. She's seen it already. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's seen it. Uh, Bad parenting. That's okay. <laughs> I'll own it. That's okay. We do as we learn. I had uh, Shaun of the Dead came out. Shaun of the Dead came out. Now, I'm in the UK, right? Can I? Oh, yeah. Go, go. I'm in the UK. And I'm doing a signing. And I have friends there, so I'm staying with them. We have a family kind of group, and we're hanging together and doing this. So I haven't gone to the signing yet, but I'm on the tube, in the, the subway of the tube in, in, in the UK, and I'm on, on traveling by car, and in the tube, you get these advertisements like you do in any subway station, or you have in the bus stop, you have that kind of huge posters of, uh, of um, Sean. Uh, Sean, but uh, so kill me. Simon, my oh, boy, oh, don't ever tell him that. I love him so. <laughs> wait, wait, Simon Pegg. Yeah, Simon. Simon. It's was supposed to be Simon Pegg. But it says Shaun of the Dead, and he's got this thing with the little thing. And I couldn't read that, you know. And, uh, so I asked my friends, I said, what is this Shaun of the Dead? 
it must be something I should know something about, maybe? He said, they said, no, some silly thing, they said, some crazy, man. they're not into, my friends were not into um, uh, horror, they were sci-fi, you know, uh, Hammer films, uh, James Bond, women, <laughs> that's what they were. So they, eh, it's nothing you should risk. And um, so I, I go to the event, and so I was there for two weeks, and I'm seeing this, but I, I just, I just I, so when they said it was nothing, I just left it alone, but I remember, because well, I keep seeing these, these, these posters everywhere, so I said, well, I left it alone. So I'm sitting in Birmingham, England, at the, um, I think it's called the uh, Memorabilia, I think it's called Memorabilia, anyway, it's a convention, 30,000 people go to it, it's a big club. And I'm sitting there, and from here to that glass, the last glass in the back. Everybody take a look, the last glass, okay? Blue door, back there, right? I'm sitting here with my, you know, signing, and I see three guys, young teenage guys, in white smocks with the paddle and for electric. And I say, I'm looking at them, and they're looking at me, and I say, hey, come, come here. Come here, come, come. I want to see you. And as I'm moving forward, they're moving back. <laughs> so, <laughs> so as I'm moving forward, they take off. I said, what is it with this? What's this? I know this is a shawl of the dead stuff, but what is it? Nothing. I come back. I don't know how long it was. Six months later, seven months later, a year later, I'm not quite sure. I, I'm sitting at the San Diego Comic Con. You know San Diego Comic Con, right? Mm -hmm. Guy comes up to me and he says, Hi, my name's Edgar Wright. Oh, yeah. And I said, Okay, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Well, how are you? I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Forrest. I'm glad to meet you. I'm glad to meet you. Like, I do normally when someone comes up, you know. And he said, oh, I'm with Sean of the Dead. I said, Sean of the Dead? I said, I want to talk to you about that. <laughs> and somebody else said, what is it? And he said, wait a minute, Edgar's coming. <laughs> Not Edgar, I'm seeing, he said, Simon's coming. You know, Simon, Simon who? Simon Pegg. Okay, he's a star. I said, okay. Simon comes up. Hi, I'm Simon. Hi, nice to meet you. What is this about Shaun of the Dead? Can you tell me what this is? He said, we would like for you to come to our premiere tonight at the Gaslight Theaters and in, in San Diego. And uh, would you be our guest? I said, certainly, I'd love to. So I went that night, took a group of people, we went to see it. Uh, I was thrilled, of course, and entertained. And um, that was, that. so, so that's the kind of, you know, a, a, um, effect, uh, impression uh, that it made on, 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 on the minds of people throughout uh, 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 America and Europe and, and all over the world. So I, I did, to say what my relationship is with George, you know, what my relationship is to this film, I mean, would I be here? You know, I mean, it's, it's, been, it's been like that. And, and, it's, and, and believe me, I was a working actor, so I'm looking to go to my next job. I had no idea there was a fan base for, for this. I was working. I was continuing to work. I was doing television. I had no idea that... Can I just let you guys, guys in on a real quick secret, okay? Yeah? Yeah? Please. All right. I get a call from Fangoria. Fangoria tells me, and I don't know who Fangoria is. <laughs> they said, Mr. Forey. I said, yes. We'd like you to come to New York. This is going to be a long story, but I'm going to get into that again. This is a great story. All right. Well, I want you to come to New York, and we'd like you to appear for an audience 
for 40 minutes and talk to the Nordics for 40 minutes on stage, 45 minutes, and we'd like you to sign autographs for a few hours, and then the rest of the time is, is yours, and uh, we'll pay you. To pay me? I'm going to New York in July. Now, just to let you know on a little, a little side note here, I've always wanted to be in New York in ju during July because they have a certain thing called the Jazz Fest. I think it's just a jazz ball at Grant's Tomb in New York. Every July, I've known that all of my friends who I knew before I became an actor, when I lived in New York for 10 years, before I started acting, I knew all my friends would be attending this jazz bowl every summer during the month of July. I've never been in New York to meet any of those people during the month of July, and I've tried, but something always happened. You know, and I've been an actor for a while at this point. Man. So I said, I'll be in New York in July, just the weekend, then the rest of the time, I can see, I can go to the jazz bowl see my friends and I can say hello Joe hello whoever not only that yes my buddy oh, wait, 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 wait. had a penthouse apartment on 15th Street between 2nd and 3rd Avenue overlooking then the Twin Towers this was a as they call him a chick's lair <laughs> and my friend called me and he said, what are you doing, kid? I'm, I'm in town, I'm doing this thing, I'm just signing thing, I'm not. He said, they said, well, I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm leaving for Virginia City. I got to, to visit family, or call Peckford, Virginia, to visit family. Uh, you want to use my place? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now I've got the penthouse. I've got, I've got, I, I finished the the, um, the, sh the the show, but just before, let me just turn this back a bit. So, I know nothing about conventions. I know nothing about this fan base. I get 45 minutes talking to an audience. I sign for two hours, whatever how long it takes to sign. You know, they provide the pictures. I don't have a picture. And I noticed that people were going upstairs. A lot of people were going in the elevator and going upstairs. And this, I was signing downstairs and the auditorium was downstairs. But a lot of people were going upstairs. And I said, why are these people going upstairs? So Sunday, I decided to go upstairs with the rest of the people after I finished my stuff before I went out, before I got in the car with two friends of mine and went down to my friend's place on 15th Street. So I decided to go up and say, so I go upstairs. And they've had the rooms all cleaned out. And now people were, vendors were in the room. And I walked into the first room I walk into, a guy has a table, a card table, like one of the card tables at home. And they have nothing but Ken Forey statuettes all over the place. And he looks at me, he says, oh, Mr. Forey. I say, yes. I say, no. Would you like one? Yeah, I'd like two. <laughs> I had no idea, just dumb. I had no, I had no clue what the fan base was. So, make a, make, make a long story. I, <laughs> this is, I gotta wrap this up because I've gotta tell you about this, this, this penthouse thing. Like, so I'm having a party at the penthouse. <laughs> Everybody's coming, the champagne is flowing. We're having a good time, believe me. I get a call from my agent. Hey Ken, they want you in Vancouver. Vancouver? They, 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 want to, you, 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 they have a role for you, we want you to work on I'm not working in Vancouver. I'm, no, I can't come, Cheryl, because I'm really busy in New York. Where am I going, guys? Jazz ball. The dream for a decade is gonna happen. I'm not leaving New York. Okay, what do what they want? They, they really want, no, 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 Cheryl, I can't do it. Okay, we're looking at it. Next day. Ken, hey, 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 what, what's going on, chef? Oh, they doubled the money. So I don't want to, no, I can't do it, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm making this short because the conversations went on a little longer than this. Third day, Ken, yes, they tripled the money. I said, Cheryl, I don't care. What kind of role is it anyway? I said, it's a prisoner role. I'm not playing any more prisoner roles. Forget it, no, just tell them no. 
fourth day. Ken, oh, Cheryl, what's up now? What is it? Um, they tripled the role. You told me that. They tripled the money. I know. But they changed the role. You're now playing a prison guard, and you have a romantic interest. Needless to say, <laughs> next day, I'm on my way to Vancouver. <laughs> Hold it, this story doesn't stop. I'm, 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 I go, I'm going to Vancouver. I get to Vancouver. I'm pissed. <laughs> First of all, I don't have a script. They're just, they're, no one's told me. That I don't, so I'm, I'm walking, I get to the studio where they're shooting, and it's a huge parking lot, and it's kind of like, it's one of those studios, it's not a studio, but a studio, you know what I mean? It doesn't look like a regular studio that you shoot out of in, in, in Hollywood or in New York or something like that. It's kind of like a weird setting, you know, like the office buildings and a huge parking lot. So I'm in the middle of this parking lot, and I'm, there's nobody there. I don't see a, 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 the, the trailers, I don't see, Equipment, trucks, nothing. And I'm walking through, and I'm so upset. Now I'm usually a gentleman on the set. I try to be a gentleman. I try to be nice to people. I try to, you know, I treat people the way that I would like to be treated. But I am, I, I miss the jazzbo <laughs> to come here to do what? You know. So I'm walking through there, and I'm walking through the parking lot, and I'm screaming obscenities. Where the is my why the <laughs> is anybody <laughs> all of a sudden I hear somebody yell Big Kenny now I don't know anybody who knows me by Big Kenny except guys if I have to really think about it who I played ball with in New York street ball okay who know who called me Big Kenny <laughs> And, and, and I'm not thinking that. I'm just thinking, who the hell's calling me Kenny, Big Kenny, and who's it? I turn, and this is God coming. See, red, turn, look, look, the guy, the red and the red. This guy's coming out again. It's coming towards me. So he's coming, and I'm saying, yeah, hello. Well, we're so happy to get you here. We really wanted you to be here. I'm glad you were able to come. Blah, 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 blah. And he's talking, he's talking, he's getting closer and closer. He said, I think it's about as close as we are. And he said, you don't know who I am, do you? He said, no, I don't. <laughs> he, said, he said, well, you used to, you used to play ball with my brother, my brother George at the YHA on 14th Street. YMHA, Young Men's Hebrew Association, on 14th Street. I said, yeah, I used to play there, yeah used to kick me and my buddy out every day when you guys came in because we were too young, we had the court and you throw us out every day. I said, he said, yeah, me and my, my, my friend, he's a black kid, he, he's a black kid, and he wore red tennis shoes. Light bulb. How can you forget, how can you not remember a kid who had red tennis shoes in those days, black kid, and all of a sudden I'm thinking, oh, I remember these kids sitting on the sideline. I said, sure, and then his face, I'm looking at his face, I said, Yes, I remember you. Sure, how you doing? What's going on? It was David the couple. It was the ex, it was the ex What? So, even then, I didn't know that there was such a huge fan base. Even though I knew there were a lot of people, I didn't know exactly, I didn't start doing conventions until Really, I did that one, and then another one Scott called me for, and then after that, I forgot about it because I was a working actor. So I was moving on to my next project. Television, da -da -da -da, movies, movie of the weeks, whatever was going on, I was involved. So I didn't know. So, um, uh, um, the, the next, the, I, I got involved in a, a restaurant. Great idea. If I were to tell you the restaurant idea, you would say, holy moly, I'm ready to invest right now. <laughs> I'm telling you, it was, it was golden. I mean, if I, if I were to tell you exactly the business plan, the performer, and all of the stuff, you would say, I'm ready to invest. 
Best is if you made a mistake, we can make this happen. It was that good. Okay, I won't go into it, but it's that good. I was losing about $3,000 a, a, a month. I was losing my shirt. I had to stop acting because I had to run it. I was originally supposed to be the uh, uh, networking person, the mark, you know, go out and, and shake hands and get to the city and talk to the mayor and all that. I did that, but also had to move furniture to mop floors and cater, and that, that wasn't in the plan, so we were losing money by the ton. And my, my partner said, didn't you at one time go to a convention and make money? I said, yeah. Yeah, what was that? I said, where, 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 where's the Wait a minute, go to your computer and look up convention. No, look up four, uh, 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 action, adventure, fantasy, look up those, those, those titles. My friend looked it up, and I had a bag, and I started grabbing, <laughs> and I started hitting conventions because I was losing three grand a month. That got me on the convention circuit. That, 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 that gave me my education about exactly where the fans were, what they were doing, what conventions were like, um, what, the, what the fan base was like. Before that, I was, you know, it was vague. I knew, but I was, as I said, I'm working on television. I'm doing this, this that. I had no clue. So without George, without his, without going up to bed, without his relationship, without, what he, what he means to me is that I have probably millions of people, if not hundreds of thousands of people, who care for me, who care for me. And I, and I can't, I can't for you. Here's some questions from you guys. Who's got a question for Ken? Shoot, go ahead. Yell it out. Okay. Um, <laughs> in the original script for Dawn, uh, Peter is supposed to kill himself and the woman is supposed to die by the helicopter blades and that was changed for the end. How do you feel about that change? Do you, I mean, it's a fantastic movie anyway, but do you think that would have altered the impact that the movie had? You, you know, I... I you know, I think when Dwayne Jones died at the end of Night of the Living Dead, it was a shock for all of us. And I think it was very effective. Uh, I thought that it might be a better ending if somebody survived. <laughs> um, and I think George and I talked about that, and the decision was made then. But, and this is the but, so many things I've you, know, you, can, you can be in the same room with the same person. Same thing happens in that room, and you will both walk out of that room with two different impressions of what happened. You, you all know this. I have said what I thought happened, you know, and, and, and how that decision was made, and why it was made. And I've heard other people say, Totally the opposite thing, and I'm saying, where the hell did that come from? And it's not just this film. You know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. I get cut, I get a uh, chainsaw through the freaking head, and they bring me back after I'm dead. I say, how does this happen? I can't live. I'm thinking, chainsaw through my head. No, 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 you're fine, you're fine. We're gonna make it up. <laughs> People tell me why it happened. Originally, I got the one reason why I was brought back. So that's what I told fans for decades. I'm with the director six, nine months ago, ten months ago, a year ago, and we're at a convention. And he said, "Why did you bring him?" And he gives, and he tells his story, and I'm going. <laughs> so that's what. <laughs> this, is not, this is not what I would have been. I've been telling the fans that that was told to me before you brought me back. You know, so you know, I, you know, I think it was it a good choice. I think it was a good choice. I think it was a good choice that friend that 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 uh, friend <laughs> that, that, that Galen and I survived. I think it. I think the bad choice is that 
nothing has ever been written or produced about what happened to us. That was a horrible choice because that was the next peak the fans wanted to know. That was always the question. People have always asked me, what happened to you guys? And, and better still, let me tell you, if I say, let me tell you what happened, what we think might have happened, you know? So I think that was, that was a, it, it was a, a, a better choice, a, a happier ending. And I think that's, George and I discussed that it was, it was a, 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 an up ending was, was the way to go. As opposed to me blowing my head up, blowing my brains out, and then Galen uh, putting her head up through the uh, chopper uh, blades. I thought that was our discussion. But again, I don't know. Because, you know, somebody might say, no, George said, or somebody else said, and I don't know, man. I, you know, I've, I've, I've given up. I've, Word G O D or the, the spelling of G O D does not does not stamp across this head. That's a damn thing. So I have no idea why humans do what they do. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you actually something about Lords of Salem. Lords of Salem. Yeah. Um, now, from what I've read, like uh, I watched um, a, uh, it with commentary, and Rob Zombie. It seems like every scene he said, "Yeah, we wanted to do this with the weather and all that. Yeah, we wanted to do this, but we didn't have money. Yeah, we wanted to do this, but for various reasons, just seem like." One thing after another after another. Do you find working on sets like that difficult or more challenging, or do you think it actually breeds more creativity? Some people or some actors and directors want to create a certain atmosphere on the set, and they think that it's it's, it's um, uh, creative, a creates a creativity that they want to see from the actors. It stimulates that kind of uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, underlining tension that 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 spurs the actors to do what he wants or to take the direction he wants his film in his vision of the film uh, to take. Um, in Lords of Salem, everything that could go wrong did go wrong, and I mean massively wrong. Uh, it was amazing that Rob was able to get anything done. Yeah, anything done in this film. If he tells you that everything, that, so this is a, an excuse for this, an excuse for that, excuse for that, he doesn't want to tell you that. It's what happened. Oh no! Yeah, it, it, it was. It was totally. You know, I was amazed every day that it, that 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 he got through it, and I was amazed that I got through it. That's what. There were things going on that were I can't even discuss with you that that uh, would, would make you all go out and commit suicide. It was just crazy. <laughs> Absolutely, it was horrible, terrible, terrible things were going on. So, so I, 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 some directors do set that kind of, you know, I, mean, I, I work with some directors that intentionally make the entire set so uncomfortable that no one wants to be there, you know? Creates, they, they, I, they may even kick over a coffee. The, 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 the catering tray, the catering, catering table, so no one has coffee, just to make, you know, they may um, uh, spit, spit somewhere <laughs> and do something. They'll do something, cuss somebody out, make somebody's life miserable, make several people's lives miserable that entire day, not because they're miserable individuals or they're, 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 they're hateful or vengeful individuals, because they want to set a certain tone. They want everyone to feel a certain so this they, they, so the film has this throughout it. You know, they want to establish that. But that wasn't what Rob had with with with, with um, Lords of Salem. What Rob had was a complete disaster that he had. He kept having to plug holes and plug holes and plug holes. And I had uh, huge disasters happening with my thing too. So I had to, I was plugging bigger holes than he was. So it, it, it was hard. It was very 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 difficult. That most difficult thing I've ever done, you know. So it was, it was, it was, it was a tough, tough shoot. And you know, you know, man, you know, <laughs> some stories I can't tell. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, Rob's remake of uh, Halloween. Yes. Showed up. Nice cameo role. Yeah. Fun role. Yeah. It's very fun with that one. Yeah. That was horrible, but fun. Did the feel on that set, was it any 
better? Does that movie? That, that was wonderful, sir. This is a great, great way we made that movie. Yeah, yeah. That that was that was totally different. Totally different. Uh, he uh, first time working, I think, with that company. I think I don't think. Who? I don't remember. That was with. Um, that was with. Was it? I don't imagine. Huh? Yeah, with um, the, the brothers. Weinstein. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, uh, he had some freedom, and and and, and it was it, it was the budget was was nice. You know, a nice budget. Showed in that movie, that movie was great. I think he did a great job right. making that. The Lawrence of Salem, I thought it was not for nothing, but it wasn't that great. It just didn't stand out. It, 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 it and I don't know if better funding would have made it stand stand out. I, I'm not sure of that. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if Rob had to do so much, you know, uh, red taping and red and band aiding throughout the the course of that that. They, you, the final result was what you saw, and it was not what he really wanted. You know what I mean? Because of the financing and all the other things that were happening. The um, the, the the Halloween. I just I just saw this. I'm I'm, I'm writing something for, for a fan um, uh, interview right now, and I just saw. Uh, uh, I don't know. It was it was on television the other night about about a week ago, two weeks ago, and I'm channel surfing and all of a sudden, oh, oh, wait a minute, the truck scene, I'm coming on, <laughs> same thing, so I said, let me watch the truck scene, so I'm watching the truck scene, and all of a sudden I said, they cut some of the truck scene, I said, it's short enough, you're going to cut more of it, who's the, who's, the, who's, the, who's the brilliant son of a bitch you call this, so um, I, I took that role because, you know, I, it was short, small role. I said, okay. But it had one of the lines, it had a line in it that had only been spoken by one other actor, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, if you guys don't know, you know the line I'm talking about? Everybody know back here besides these guys? You guys don't know it? You gotta say it. What we got here is a failure. To communicate. Cool hand Luke. Cool hand Luke. Struthers Martin. He said that line. That's a famous line. I said, God, I get to say that line. That's a Struthers Martin. No one else said. And then he also got his jumpsuit from me. Yep. So that means that ties me into Halloween one, two, three, four, all the way through. I said, Well, I think I'll do this. You know what I mean? And it's funny thing. Just to go off the subject here. <laughs> Rob, I got ready for Tyler, because I knew he's a big guy. I didn't know how tall, I know he was bigger than me, and I knew he was a former wrestler. I said, well, we're gonna have a good time. So I, I was getting in shape, you know, doing myself. And I was, you know, you know, I, when I'm, I'm in shape, I'm in pretty good shape. So I was, I was doing my thing, you know, getting in. And for some reason, somehow, I twisted my knee. This is about a four weeks, maybe three weeks before I had to shoot. And I had to go up to San Jose to a convention. I had to go to Chicago. And then I had to come back and shoot the scene with Rob. So I went to the emergency room. And I said, listen, guys, doctor, surgeon, whatever the hell it is. Hey, listen, I have to have this fixed because he said, no, 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 it's for you. You're going to have to rest it for at least a month. I said, no, 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 you don't understand. I have to go to San Jose and then Chicago. Then I have to shoot this scene with a guy that's about seven foot. Instead, and we got to have this, I got to fight him. And I said, I've got to have this fixed, you know, right away. No, Mr. Four, you're really going to have to rest it. There's nothing we can do about it. I said, no, no, you don't understand. I've got to go to Chicago and then I got to go to San Jose. And I got to shoot with this guy that's seven foot. We got to have a, a battle. I got to have this, this fixed tonight, today. No, Mr. Forey, I'm sorry, but look, you don't understand. <laughs> About 10 minutes later, security came in, two guys that ushered me out of the emergency room. <laughs> and so I get to the set. Oh, this is just such a long story, because I could tell you what happened in San Jose with those idiots. Oh, no, in Chicago with those idiots, anyway. Tony Tapone. Yeah doing snow angels out on the roof of the party I'm having. 
security coming up, 50 guys ready to throw me out. I'm limping from, I'm going from my bedroom because my leg's up. I got 50, 100 people maybe, 70 people, 50 people in the, I had this huge suite. I paid for all this freaking liquor for all these people from room service. <laughs> all I'm doing is, <laughs> Back to my room, leg up, and listening to all these people having a party. <laughs> then they should be out on the roof, because the, the, they have those roofs, you know, right outside the windows. And the snow, so they're doing the snow angel thing and then throwing snowballs at security. <laughs> <laughs> Hour later, security's banging on the door. Ken, they want to see you at the door. Four guys my size. We're throwing you out of here. You and your people. Well, what's happened? They're throwing snowballs at us. I take care of it. I take care of it. So that was before I get to rock. I get out here. I go to the set. I say, Rob, how you doing? He says, good, good, good. We walk in. He says, Ken, what I want you to do is when you walk into the bathroom and go to the mirror, I want you to go, ow! <laughs> Whatever that thing is, I guess. He wanted me to spin. I said, Rob, I, I, I can't spin. He said, he looked at me, he said, you hurt your knee, did you? I said, yeah. He said, okay, just, just, do, just come in and do what you can. So, where was I? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that, you know, so, that was... Well, how did you get through the scene with the, with the knee? Oh, man, it was wrapped up already. I had two elastic yeah, bandages on me. It still looked like it hurt. <laughs> Even with the leg, friend. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I took a dive. <laughs> what do you got? Go ahead, buddy. You worked with George Harry Ramo twice back to back on the bed, Night Riders. After Night Riders, did George ever approach you to be in enough one of his films? No. Ever? Not that I know of. No, not that I can remember. No, I don't think, I don't think, a lot of people have asked that, of, of many of us. Uh, not only the people in, in my, people in night, in, in uh, dawn, day, and, la and, and eventually land. And they've asked, didn't, didn't ask you to be in, the, and he, he never kind of, he never had a, 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 uh, a traveling, group of actors that he worked with consistently. He always reached out to other, other actors. And I, and I noticed that in most of those films, you look at, I, I don't think Survival or any of those others had repeat performances from anybody, did they? Anybody know of any? He was in Martin and then Dawn and then Day. Yeah, 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 but not, wow, was he in? He, he only played a guy that got shot off a roof in, in, in Dawn. One of the scientists in Day, and what was he in? Uh, Martin is Martin, right, 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 right. John Amplis, yeah. Well, you know, and then he, he did bring us back. I don't know how many he brought back. He brought back a few of us back to play and to do Night Night Rider, as you say. You know, so we did do that. But he, he, he I, don't, I don't know why he didn't. He didn't bring. It, it wasn't like a constant with him. You know, I did, you know, I didn't get a call for day. I didn't get a call for a land or any of the others, and I don't think anybody else did either. You know, so I think it was something that he didn't do. I don't, he's in what? No, he's in Land of the Dead, right? And Dawn, but yeah, okay, like I don't know. I, I was I was impressed by Day and Land. I didn't see the others. Okay, I didn't. Uh, but I but I was impressed 
Initially, by day, I thought it was going to be a huge success. I thought it was going to be a huge success. And, 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 and I was really taken by it. I thought it was dark. I thought it was eerie. I thought it was, you know, I, 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 frightening. I, you know, I think it had that, 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 that kind of, you know, um, at the, the right location for exactly that kind of film. Oh, it was wonderful. It, well, yeah, yeah. I thought it was wonderful. Yeah. But, but it didn't go anywhere near what I thought it was. And it land, um, I thought it was a good film. I thought it was a great, great job by everyone in it. Certainly had a, a, a huge cast of, uh, of fine actors and a lot, large, but, uh, large budget, oh, yeah. you know, and uh, hell, you had everybody in it, my God. John Lozano, John Dennis Lozano, Hopper. Dennis Hopper. Yeah. Uh, you go down the line, a lot of, lot of great people. Yeah, there, and <laughs> my, what was the big guy that was Spanish, big Spanish guy that was in it? Uh, he's huge, huge. He was one of the military guys, and yeah. I, I forget his name, but he and my brother got together at, at a convention in uh, Baltimore. Remember um, the one that used to be in Baltimore? Uh, hor horrifying? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Horrifying. Yeah. Horrifying. Anybody remember Horrifying? Yeah. It was in Baltimore. It's yeah, a great they convention. They just stopped like three years ago. They, they stopped about four or five years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, horrifying. Well, my brother, I took my brother down there, and I think the guy's name was Carlos or Jose. It's a Spanish name, but he's a huge guy, huge. And my brother is a big man as well. And they got to drinking, <laughs> and they cleaned out the entire bar. <laughs> and this is a big bar. A lot of people. This is a big partying bar. And everybody had to leave. <laughs> everybody. I'll never forget it. So that, that reminded me of Lamb because he was in it. I hope that answers your question. Anybody else? What do you got? Oh, that's, you're taking on, you know, as fans, yeah, exactly, you know, I, I, I would say, I was, I, you, 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 you know, I got a thing going here. Yeah. We're trying to talk over here. Hey, I'm walking here, I'm walking here. <laughs> Uh, I, no, I would say, good, great question. I would say join those groups, those individuals, wherever you can find them on the internet that are interested in the same um, issues that you are, and join them. Ask, demand, say we'd like to see it. You know, I, I was watching uh, Hawaii Five O. On television, my, my wife loves it. <laughs> and then watching Hawaii Five O, I said a lot of Asian people are getting work here. And was something, was something else that was on. I said a lot of Asian people are getting work here. You know, a lot of Spanish people are getting work here. It's an important issue. You know, this is this is. Whew. Let's put it this way, because I don't want to get into it because I could go on really a long time on this one. <laughs> but let's put it this way. We're here. All of us. None of us are going anywhere. We like it here. All of us. So we got to work it out. We got to work it out. Got to make it fair. Got to make it even. Got to make it happy. We got to, uh, we're in the best. This is the best. I've been in the other country. Some of you have. You know what's going on. You know, well, you know, this is the best that we have. We have a melting pot here. You don't have that in the other countries. I've been here, a bit, a little bit here, a little bit there. But this is, this is the great experiment. And this experiment and this Constitution, Bill of Rights, this government is the best on the planet and we've got to protect it. So whatever we have to do to make it just and appreciable to everyone, 
whatever we can do to make it fair and the most positive experience in the lives of the people who live here, no matter who they are, the better it's going to be for all of us. So we've got to find a way to make it happen. All right, guys, we're going to end with one more question. Go ahead. After all these years, have you finally gotten to work with Jasper? That's a great question. That's the, that's the ender right there. That's the closer. That's the closer. Yes! I go to the jazz bar. I don't know how I got there, but it was in July. <laughs> okay? I'm expecting to see all of these people. I, you know, you fantasize about something that they, where you think it's going to be. You know, you have those visions, those ideas. You say, okay, this is what it's... I left, I left, I left. These people 20 years ago, 40 years ago, they're gonna all be there the way they were, right? That's how I left them. I saw three people I knew out of all those people there. Those three people, one of them, I hate it immensely. <laughs> The other two were two idiots that I made look stupid on the basketball court, and I hated them as well. <laughs> and that's all I saw. <laughs> that was it. I'm sitting there, I'm saying, not, am I, not only am I dressed improperly for this thing, so I'm dressed like I dressed back then, because I'm thinking I'm gonna see these guys there. With, I had the wrong stuff on. I'm not going to go into that. I'll tell you about that another time. But I'm sitting there going, and then I'm seeing this person, the first person who I hated. I can tell you a story about this one. Whoa! But, but I'm seeing her. She's doing this. Trying to hide behind somebody because now I'm Ken Forey, the actor, and she's whatever she's doing. And it doesn't mean nothing to me, but I can tell to her because she's hiding. Back in the back, hiding. Well, I'm sitting over here watching this thing. Whoa, that's the oh. Then, I'm walking past the mother, down to get some refreshments or something during one of the intermissions, and I pass these two guys. Two guys. And make this short. I was known to be a fairly good basketball player. Football too, but, 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 but basketball, I was, I was known in New York to play pretty good basketball. And you know 4th Street, 6th Avenue? Anybody know what 4th Street, 6th Avenue is? Down the village, you know it? I owned it. <laughs> I owned it. I controlled that, all right? You know that's a famous court down there. So, I had some guys that were wanted me to lose, and one guy tried to rough me up. I'm from Indiana, he's never rough me up on basketball court because I rough is what I come from. You know? So I got Indiana, we play ball rough, and that's just what it is. So I said, oh, this is good, you'll be physical with me? Great. But, so this guy, at the end of the game, they were trying to, and I hit him with an elbow, turned at half court, Shot the jumper, two points, game's over. And all the heckling, all the, all the, it's like Spike Lee talking to Reggie Miller. <laughs> it was like kind of heckling, heckling, all that stuff right there. So I didn't have any love for these guys. Who else, who do I see? Those two idiots. As I'm, and as I'm passing by, I go. <laughs> Game time. Thanks for coming, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.